Hey everybody, hope everyone's having a fantastic Friday. It's another episode of Best Practices from Next Gen Cam. My name is Amir, and today we're going to be getting into chain and boundary selection on Autodesk Fusion 360. So what I have here today is a simple chain cover. Um, it's just made out of aluminum and we will be cutting it from a raw piece of stock just from a uh, box stock and we're going to be doing this in two different setups so this is going to be our face let's just call this our face side it's got the protrusion on this side and then we are will be using this is what we'll be calling this our back side and this is where the cavity is and where the chain assembly will sit so in order to get started we're going to start here on our back side what we're going to do is we're going to basically mill around it we're going to mill the cavity we're going to put some finishing tool pads on here and we're just going to take this from a to z however instead of focusing on the actual tool pads i'll be focusing more on the chains and the boundary selection that we're going to be using to constrain our tools in certain different areas and what are some of the different alternatives that we have um, and the different tool pads that we can use to get to the final product so immediately to start off with I just have a simple setup here um, I have this being cut off from a piece of billet material like I said before um, I'm going to adjust the stock really quickly here I'm going to go from the top give it a little bit of an offset about 30 thou or so right uh, the next thing what I want to do is I am going to just face our part so that we're starting with a nice flat face I will be selecting tools off of my library here so I'm just selecting a two inch tool library um, again so the first step here as you can see this is our first flag with a chain so if I left this as stock contours and I have nothing selected what Fusion is going to do is it's going to select the outermost dimensions of your stock and it's going to face the whole thing right so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you the difference between actually using the outside chain to face this flat and if we were to select a single if we were to give it a chain uh, for it to drive off of so I'm just going to hit OK as you can see I have a simple facey toolpath and that just faces our whole block of uh, our whole stock so now that we have actually finished roughing uh, facing roughing the inside and finish the outside profile we really only need to come in back in here and finish the inside tapered wall and the pocket floor so in order to do that what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to do a 3d contour I'm going to select a tool I could select this half inch bull nose it has a little radius at the bottom um, I'm on the wrong setup here just do it one more time. I'm going to do select spool nose. And now what I'm going to do is since I want to restrict this bull nose to only cutting on the inside, on my machining boundaries, I want to make sure that I'm on the selection and I pick this inside chain. So by picking the inside chain, it'll make sure that the tool doesn't actually cut any walls on the outside. I am going to go in here and adjust my step downs a little bit. Let's just say we wanted it's around 50 thou. I'm going to hit OK. And then as you can see, it constricts that tool only on the inside. If I was to say silhouette and have tool outside of the boundary, we can check to see now if the tool actually still goes outside and as you can see by not chaining it by not picking the right selection you're going to have trouble keeping that tool just on the inside of your part so I'm going to edit that program one more time I'm going to make sure that I'm not on silhouette but I'm on selection I am going to pick the inside chain and then by picking the inside chain and saying tool center on boundary meaning that you're keeping the midpoint of that tool on the middle of the chain I can go ahead and hit OK and we'll get the the right contour that we need 
And now, very finally, I am going to go ahead and do a simple 3D horizontal or a flat. Both these strategies are good for machining all the flat areas of your part. I'm going to be picking horizontal. Again, if I was to keep machining boundary set to none, and if I was to hit OK, you'll see that instead of only just cutting down in here, we are also going to be cutting up in here because it notices that it's flat on the top. In order to combat that, make sure that you are again on selection mode for your machining boundary and you pick this inside chain and say I would like to stay on the inside of it you don't have to give it any additional offsets and then you can go ahead and hit OK as you can see now we restrict the toolpath using our chains and boundaries so we're going to go ahead and simulate this one more time just to see if we have all our toolpaths in order it's going to go a quick roughing on the outside and then as you can see we've cut the inside and we should have no stock remaining anywhere we can smoothen this out by obviously increasing our reducing our step down numbers so I actually can go ahead and make this a lot more smoother uh, let's just say we want to finish it off with a 15 thou step down you should be looking at something a lot more smoother as far as the surface finish is concerned and just like that Now, if you were to drill these holes, the holes also kind of follow a very similar uh, options with chaining. So for example, if I wanted to go ahead and drill these holes out now, let's just say a simple tr trick is if you didn't actually know what the hole sizes were, you could hover over the hole and it would give you the diameter of that hole. So it looks like it's a 0.193 hole and it's threaded. So I'm going to go ahead and get into my library here. I'm going to look for my drill. You can do a center drill at first and then drill it. I'm just going to skip over and just do the drill all at once. If it is a 0.193, I'm going to assume that it is going to need a tap size that's much smaller. I'm going to tap it with a 1.8 or 1.7. Select that tool. And then all I have to do is hit my geometry. I can select the first hole. Now this might not be the right drill size, but I just want to show you how you can use chains to change these things. By selecting select same size diameter, as you can see it goes ahead and picks all of these together however let's just say that well you had multiple holes more than just a few over here now I know in this situation it might be convenient just to turn them on as I please without selecting same size diameter in case I wanted to not do one of them but let's just say that you had a lot of different holes everywhere that you wanted to avoid but you still wanted to use the select same diameter option. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually go ahead into my design area and I can create a sketch on top of where those holes are. Let's just say that I go ahead and make a rectangle chain just like that. Now it doesn't have to be perfect as crude as you need it However, the main thing is it needs to, all the holes that you are in question need to be inside this rectangular chain or really any closed contour. I can even have done this through a, just a simple line. As long as the contour is closed, that's the main thing. So I'm just going to hit finish sketch here. I'm now going to go back to that manufacturing area and now on my drilling operation again I'm not too concerned about what size hole this is um, what I want you guys to see is now if I was to do select same size diameter and click on all of them I can still use chains to constrict 
which holes get picked. So in my containment boundary right here, if I was to go ahead and click on just that containment boundary, as you can see, it still does the same size diameter. However, it only picks the ones that are in that within the boundary of this chain. So again, this is easily adjustable. So in any time you have a part that has a lot of holes that you don't want to be wasting time trying to select uh, individual holes or you're trying to avoid certain holes, let's just say in case you broke a tap or something. So this is another easy way to just go ahead, draw a quick little sketch and then adjust and change where those holes get picked. Just like that. And again, if you go in back into your design area, you can actually change these lines to however you need by just dragging the endpoints. So if you needed to add more holes into that area, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go back to manufacture. And now, as you can see, before I regenerated the toolpath, it only still has selected the three up here. I'm going to hit generate. And without me even having to re-edit that toolpath, as you can see, it goes ahead and adds all the holes that are now within this boundary of chain, within this chain. So that's how the drill operations can also be restricted using chain boundaries. The next thing what I want to do is I want to show you how to use chains to basically engrave or to chamfer. So in order to chamfer, the traditional method or the, the easiest method is you can just use the engraving toolpath on here, but can, as long as you have a chamfer mill, you can go ahead and, so I'm going to select a new chamfer mill here, um, grave chamfer tool might make a couple of changes to this tool here Let's say select I'm going to edit that tool I am going to give it a longer flute length about 200 or so um, I'm going to increase these values as well I'm also going to give it a zero tip diameter. I'm also going to match the shaft diameter and the diameter of the cutter. I'm going to make a 45 degree cutter. I'm also going to increase the tool length, the flute length, just a little bit more. It means I have to increase the rest of them a little bit more as well. So that's going to be my engraving tool right here. I'm going to hit accept select and now if I was to go ahead and engrave any of these tools these holes as you can see I can go ahead and now give it okay right there it does error out since I probably didn't give it enough of a height Let's see if that works Unfortunately, it says no passes to link. I wonder if that is because I have too many leads and transitions. Um, we, we could also try to do it via, instead of an engraver, we could also do it with a trace option too. The trace is really cool because it follows um, contours irrespective of the Z value. So if you had varying Z values, you can use a trace to have the tool still in contact as you keep changing Z values. So I would use the same toolpath for engraving on here as well. I'm going to go ahead and pick that chamfer tool that we just created. Again, with the same idea, we are going to pick these. Hit OK. So as you can see, the trace option keeps that tool right down here. Now I can also hit edit. And I can go back to my passes tab and give it an actual chamfer width diameter that I want to give it. So if I wanted to say 30 thou and give it a uh, simple tip offset as well, I can go ahead and change those values in here and hit OK. And as you can see, that gives it a better chamfer. Now let's just say that we've been, we've been dealing a lot with just closed contours. 
what I would really like to kind of also get into is let's just say that you didn't want to chamfer the whole thing and you only wanted to chamfer a certain region. So after you actually make a selection, you can go ahead and edit these chains. In order to edit the chains, what you have to do is after you make a selection, go ahead and left click on that chain one more time. And now what you do is you activate the chain edit mode. You get this little pop up on the corner here that has an accept, a cancel, and a delete. And you also have, to, you can toggle between doing a closed contour or an open contour. So having it changed back into an open contour, I can actually select the chain or the segments that I actually want to concentrate on, giving me the ability to actually not just pick the chains that Fusion is using and closing the contour, I can go ahead and modify that chain after uh, to only concentrate on exactly what I want to concentrate on. Right? So if I hit the plus key right now, saying I accept that chain changes, as you can see, now it doesn't actually go all around. It only stays closer, it only stays on the segments that I actually picked on my chain. Again, I can edit this at any time really just by clicking on that chain. Um, if I wanted to go all the way to the other end of this, it doesn't mean that I actually have to click on each line. Because I have it set to toggle on open contour, even though I started right here, I can go ahead and hover over a chain on this side and click. As you can see, it automatically fills in the gap of all the other line segments before I reach this chain right here. If I hit the plus key, again as you can see, I have now edited the chain to my liking. I'm going to go ahead and hit the OK button. And as you can see, we have a trace option going on the outside, giving us a chamfer on the outside. Now that we've done this, the back piece of this, I'm going to go ahead and flip this over. I do have a setup that I have controlled over here. I did add a Haas machine to it just so we can see some better simulation on there. I'm using a Haas UMC 750. Well, now what we're going to do is we're actually going to be setting up a roughing and adaptive toolpath on our face side to get rid of the bound stock that's left over. So I'm going to start with a 3D adaptive clearing. And since you since we've already gone ahead and roughed everything out from the back side down to this face level right here, we don't need to actually rough all the way down past this face. So I'm going to go ahead and say geometry. Again, as you can see, I have not picked anything for my machining boundary. I am going to be leaving it as none. I am however also going to keep my stock contours turned on so it knows where it needs to go to. Uh, we can turn it off just to show you how it looked different if it didn't have stock contours turned on. I'm going to hit OK after I change this optimal load. Um, we are also going to be changing that back to 1 inch. Now we can decide to leave stock, which we probably will want to leave stock so we can come back in here and finish it off with our different toolpaths. I'm going to hit OK. As you can see, it's still going to try to go down under it here because I forgot to change the heights. So I'm going to, for my heights tab, I'm going to go ahead and set like selection and this right here for my reference. As you can see, what we've done is now we've just contained the roughing to only be on this side. So if I was to go ahead and simulate this, I do apologize, I have the setup stock to be from the stock box size, and I also want at everything offset up from the top. I'm going to hit OK. We are going to go ahead and regenerate that very quickly. I'm going to go ahead and simulate that so you can kind of see that it's actually starting from the outside of the stock. So that's what we kind of end up with there. Next what I want to do is I want to go ahead and 
add my finishing tool pads to this. Now the reason why I wanted to show you this particular part is because we can also go ahead and do a 3D contour on here again if you're doing a simple 3-axis finishing. However, I, what I would also like to show you is the Swarf Toolpath. Uh, the Swarf Toolpath is a five a full 5-axis toolpath that we can use to actually finish these walls on the side by using the side of the cutter. So if you are interested in using the Swarf Toolpath, all you have to do is by selecting Swarf, you're going to select your tool. Now you probably would need something like a flat end mill so that now when you get to this point you still can go all the way down to at least the beginning of this radius. Uh, I am going to do for my drive mode now. This is where it gets a little tricky when it comes to selecting different chains to drive this toolpath. So what I am going to do now is I'm going to say contours and I'm actually going to say contour pairs and now what you pick first is actually going to be your cutting geometry and if you were to pick another chain similar to that for example the one on the inside here as you can see if I did a top view it's the internal contour of the outside chain this is going to be our actual drive chain and this is our cutting chain so now if I go ahead and adjust a couple of different things here I can choose if I want to do this in a single pass. More than likely, I would want to do a couple of passes. So I'm just going to say, let's do it from the top. Uh, we are going to adjust our manual step downs. Let's just say we want to do about 150 to about 200 thou at a time. I can go ahead and increase the amount of step downs I really need on here. Again, it can be an arbitrary value. And then I'm going to hit OK just so we can see what sort of toolpath I get. So now as you can see, we have a toolpath that's coming in and it's a swarf toolpath, so it's cutting at an angle with the side of the tool. I am going to go ahead and simulate this so you can see what this looks like on a 5-axis machine. Slow it down just a tad. I would probably need to go ahead and simulate both of these. I'm also going to go to the next operation here. So as you can see, we're now going to be using the side of that tool, like so. Now the Swarf toolpath is available on the machining extension as part of the, all the other five full 5-axis full toolpaths. And it can save you a lot of time, especially trying to do a 3D contour all the way down. So as you can see now, we actually finished with that wall. We do have a little bit of a small step here at the radius level. We'll come back in there and finish that off with a rounded bull nose tool. The next thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and do another 3D uh, contour. However, since I did already set up the 3D contour on this side for this cavity, I can actually go ahead and copy toolpaths over from setup to setup. I'm going to paste it in my new setup. Now the only thing that we really would need to do is like we mentioned before we have to go and adjust the chains and the boundaries. So now what I want to really do is I want to constrict this tool to only stay within this boundary inside here. So I can actually go ahead and pick a chain from the top and even pick this chain on the bottom and then now as you can see it will give us a toolpath. Oh, before I might need to adjust, make some adjustments to the settings here. So it's going to go from the top of the model. I'm also going to give it a selection height to go from top here. I am also going to take this middle boundary off. I hit OK. So now as you can see, we're only constricting the tool to cut on the inside. If I was to go ahead and not select any sort of chain or not have a selection and only have it set to silhouette, let's see what sort of toolpath we now get. So as you can see, it's actually trying to go on the outside as well. Now you might be wondering, well, why isn't it going all the way to the bottom? This can be easily fixed by basically giving 
we can also just oh well that's because it's on the height here so I'm just gonna say model bottom and then as you can see it goes all the way to the bottom here we could also kind of increase the offsets a little bit so if I was to give it an additional offset of about an inch or so let's go ahead and see what this toolpad looks like now by giving it that additional offset of about a one inch you can actually go outside of the out parameter of the, the tool, uh, the, the part, and have it recognize features that can still machine past this face. So if you're ever stuck in a situation where you don't really understand why your tool doesn't want to go into other areas, even though you gave it the right chain, you might just have to go ahead and uh, manipulate the additional offset to kind of get you where you need to be. However, in our case now, since we had that Swarf toolpath, there's two different ways to do this. You can either have the 3D contour toolpath on the outside, or you can go ahead and use that Swarf toolpath like we did up here as well. So let's go ahead and give this a quick little simulation and see where we're at. Again, I could possibly not even run that contour. I'm just going to hit simulate right now. I'm going to go play this out. I'm just going to fast forward all the way to the end here just to see what sort of toolpath that we get. So as you can see we did end up with a tiny little lip on here and we still need to cut the inside pocket right here. So I am going to go ahead and do that. I would like to show you how we could use a scallop toolpath to finish off that top radius to give you a nice smoother uh, shallower finish for a certain big the contour can finish steeper surfaces but for shallower surfaces you would probably would like to finish it something with a scallop so I'm going to show you how to do that as well I'm going to use a 3 8 ball nose uh, it's kinda right here and now what I could do is I can actually say hey I want to pick this on the inside, the very outside here, and pick the very inside here. That way you actually constrict that tool to only stay on that radius. I am going to go ahead and give it a smaller step over. So let's say we want about 10 thou on there. I'm going to hit OK. Um, let's just see what it says. So now as you can see, it gives us our tool path. However, it's not actually water falling over to compensate for that ball nose radius. So in order to fix that again what we need to do is we need to edit that and go ahead and change that on our additional offsets. So I'm going to open that up now simply by giving it a little bit more of an offset. I will say it's about 200 and now as you can see we probably opened it up a little bit too much over here but that's how you would adjust that the waterfall effect. Maybe I'll try it at 50 thou. Say yes. So as you can see, as we creep getting that additional offset higher and higher, we are going to be able to get that tool to go to where we need it to go. So you would be looking at a tool pad kind of similar to this. It gives you the ability to cut off that lip. And then again, very for a last resort here we can use our horizontal toolpath one more time pick this inside chain because we don't really want to do none again if we did none it's going to want to machine the flats here at the bottom as well so go ahead and give it the selection pick that chain we can say we want to stay in the center of that chain we can also take this offset off of here and I'm going to hit OK just to see what this looks like uh, we did, however, need to change our tool to a bullnose end mill or a flat end mill. We do have this half inch bullnose here that might help with finishing this off. Go ahead and hit OK. And then as you can see, now we've constricted it via the boundary just to stay only on the inside. Let's go back to the scalp toolpath right here just because we want to explore a little bit more on manipulating these chains. So like I said before, remember, we can go ahead and 
um, edit the change that we get from Fusion. So by not clicking on anything, Fusion is going to default to giving you a closed contour. Now for 3D toolpath, you still would need a closed contour. However, we can always try to pick different chains if we have to. For example, let's just say that I wanted to actually do a scallop toolpath, but I only wanted to do this particular wall right here. In order to do that, what I can do is I can go ahead and pick a line. Now, bear in mind it is giving me that chain. However, remember if I click on it one more time, I'll go into the, the boundary edit mode, the chain edit mode. And now I can start shaping that chain to whatever my liking is to contain that particular boundary. So I'm going to hit the plus key right here. So as you can see now, we change that chain to what we want to machine in. Go ahead and hit OK. I'm going to say yes. Now as you can see, it's only going to concentrate within that surface that we wanted to cut on. So as you can see, there are multiple different ways to do this. So just as a recap, I would want to say, whenever you decide to start machining or uh, 3D, 3D machining any sort of surfaces or roughing large chunks of material from billet, always have your adaptive toolpath to set on none. It gives you, uh, it's faster. It also lets you the whole the whole model be seen without giving too much constrictions, and we also want to make sure we keep that stock contour turned on so it can recognize any sort of surfaces that are outside just the perimeter of your part. So lastly, I just have the simple block here that I want to show you a few things that you can do with just editing adding chains through sketches and adding 2D toolpaths to these sketch chains. So I'm, all I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to go ahead and create a quick simple little sketch on the top here. I'm going to just make a text box and I'm going to just type in something. Now I can also have it on single point fonts or I can also have them as regular fonts. For a single point font, for example, what I'll do is I'll choose the CDM right here. I'm going to hit OK. Um, I'm also going to finish. I'm also going to finish this off by adding just a little slight tapered line here. I'm going to complete that through and just finish this contour right here. I'm just going to hit Finish Sketch. So as you can see now that I have this little sketch right here and this little engraving right here. I'm going to go to my manufacturer now. I'm just going to do a quick little setup. Nothing crazy. I'm going to hit OK. I'm actually going to change that to no stock at all anywhere. You can also just say no additional stock. I'm going to hit OK. So typically what I would do is in, in case I wanted to add a contour to this, like we've discussed earlier, you can go from the actual outside geometry and chains of your part. However, you can also select these 2D chains. So for example, right here I'm using geometry off the part. And I always want to make sure that I'm cutting on the outside. You can switch this over to cut on the inside. However, that's going to make your part small. So we always want to make sure that we have this arrow going on the right side of the chain. And if I hit OK, that'll give me my simple 2D contour around the part. However, let's just say that I wanted to instead use some 2D chains to drive this. It's the same process. So for by not picking any chains off the body, I can actually pick chains off of the sketches that I made. So if you look right here, I just go ahead and pick this chain. Um, now I can go ahead and hit OK. As you can see, I haven't changed the heights yet, so I'm going to actually go ahead and change the heights a little bit, give it a little bit of an offset. I'm going to say, oh, go down about half an inch. Right. We also want to make sure that we are cutting on the outside, like I discussed earlier. And just by clicking on that chain, you should be able to switch that side. I'm going to hit OK. So as you can see now, it is going to go through this part, but you can use just chains to derive directions and contours for 2D contour toolpaths. 
The nice thing about that is I can always go back in here and make the changes that I need to from those sketches. And then I just come back into my manufacturer and if just by regenerating the toolpath, I can now change that toolpath. So make sure that you can also add 2D chains and 2D sketches to drive a lot of your toolpaths. The next thing I want to show you is a trace toolpath. Again, like we discussed earlier, I am going to be using a simple chamfer and chamfer tool again. Uh, we'll make a couple of quick changes to that tool just so you can see the engraving a lot better. I'm going to go ahead and give it a zero tip diameter. And I'm just going to make them the same size here. Perfect. I'm also going to increase, the, I'm going to make this a 45 degree. I'm also increasing the flute length to about two, a quarter inch. Make this a quarter inch. Should be okay. I'm going to hit select. And now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pick this text right here, the text line, and I can go ahead and give this a negative axial offset of about 5,000 or so. I'm going to hit OK. Now you can see it's doing a single point line engraving on the part. So I'm going to go ahead and simulate that for you just so you can see what that looks like. That's what that looks like. And then the convenient thing is you can always drop back into the design area and re-edit that sketch and you are able to change this text into whatever other font that you'd like to see. And these are just for the single point ones. So for example if I would say it into simplex I'll hit OK, finish the sketch and now just by going back into manufacture and regenerating that toolpath I should be able to see it follow the new chain. Alright, so just as a summary, just to cover what we did today, we kind of went through what 2D toolpaths are and the differences there were with the 3D toolpaths. So 2D toolpaths are definitely chain driven. Uh, they need you to select certain chains so that the tool can follow that chain. Uh, typically these are all usually in the same z-axis except for the trace toolpath. Uh, the 3D toolpaths consider more of the surfaces on your part. However, you can confine uh, the 3D surface toolpaths to certain zones of your part using chains and you can also always make sure that you can go ahead and edit these chains at any, any time. Uh, make sure that you use different strategies for your roughing and finishing like we saw earlier in that part. We were able to finish the outside with just a 2D contour but we gave it a couple of different uh, options so that we can actually rough outside material and finish it all in one toolpath. We can also use uh, chains and boundaries to confine hole drilling operations in case you had multiple different holes but you wanted to avoid a few of them. However, you still wanted to use the select same size diameter. Go ahead and uh, add, a, add some sketches some rectangles so that way you can actually keep certain holes and you can avoid the, uh, the rest of them. Um, you can, Like I said earlier, you can edit these chains but just make sure after you edit the chain after selecting on them you hit that plus button so that the new chain shape is saved. Uh, and then finally we kind of talked about how the trace toolpath can be used a lot for engraving and you can even use it to deburr a lot of your parts by just using it as a chamfer toolpath as well. Thank you for watching another episode of Best Practices coming from NextGen Cam for Fusion 360. Uh, go ahead and give us a like, hit subscribe so that you're always in the way for our new videos whenever they drop. And I'll see you guys on the next one.